Hello, welcome to Nutrition Therapy by Lucy, a channel where we talk about food, good nutrition, and health. Thank you for your support for always watching my videos, but most importantly for consuming my content. I am so grateful. So today we are talking about matters reproductive health, and we are learning from the best. And when I say the best, it's definitely the best from La Femme Clinic. And joining me is Dr. Du. Dr. Karibu Sana. Good evening, viewers. And, and thank <laughs> you for having us. Thank you. Asante Sana. Thank Please. you for coming. Wana kujua, but introduce yourself. Um, so, thank you for having me again. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. David Fu, a consultant, obstetrician, and gynecologist, and also fertility specialist based at La Farm Healthcare. So, Dr. We, mm. most of the people we know are gynecologists. But you need ops. <laughs> yes, what so makes the difference? Actually, what obstetrician means a doctor who deals with pregnant women. Okay. And gynecology means a doctor who deals with women who are not pregnant. Okay. So because we see all women, then now it becomes obstetrician mm -hmm. and then gynecologist, being that you're seeing pregnant and unpregnant women. Oh, wow. Mm. Okay. Yes. Most of us, you know, <laughs> whether you're pregnant or yes. not, no, not yeah, yeah, <laughs> Exactly. So today, people are talking about preconception in the first trimester. So, topic yellow, it's all about pregnancy. Dr. first I want us to tell us what is preconception care. Very good. So, preconception care is a deliberate effort mm -hmm. uh, made by a couple to be in the best um, physical, mental, um, psychological, mm -hmm. and you know even emotional well-being mm -hmm. to be able to welcome a, a, a pregnancy. And be in the best position to carry it to term. Yes. So when it comes to preconception, it's your only the fertility. In Anglia, appear the psychological bit of it. Absolutely, because okay. what WHO recommends or WHO defines wealth, uh, health rather, as the complete physical, mental, emotional, psychological well-being of a person. Therefore, if somebody has um, physical well-being, but then they emotionally disturbed, then they are not healthy. If they have, you know, physical, you know, all this, so if any aspect is missing, then they are not healthy. So we literally have to look at the individual as a whole. Because me, le preconception. After yengi tunajua ni yuna angalia nga space ni yawa toto. Kuwa kikuwa class two, kuwa takuwa class. Kwa hivyo hapo school fees, tume balance misuri. So there is more. There is a lot more to it. Mean that, and what we've even started off with, with, mentioning it as deliberate means mm -hmm. that you met a manani about what you're looking for mm -hmm. um what you want as a couple when you want so it has the, of course the aspect of family planning that we want at this time we will mm -hmm. be healthy and that if the baby we are giving ourselves an allowance because we know conception doesn't happen uh, necessarily the first time you try yeah. then you can give yourself um a, you know up to a year to try and conceive so all those are things that are taken up by the couple in preconception planning and what is the importance? Why why preconception care? Now, preconception care is important in that you want to re to have a smooth pregnancy as you can, mm -hmm. um, with reduced instances of miscarriages, mm -hmm. reduced instances of um, you know pregnancy related anemia, instances of diabetes and patient hypertension in pregnancy because these are conditions which can be prevented mm -hmm. um, in some cases by just being very deliberate about being um you know about being about preconception care let it that way okay when it comes to the care itself mm -hmm. are there maybe specific nutrients when it comes now to fertility that unatilia manani yes now in terms of nutrition we look at um a mother you know we recommend that there should be the major food groups, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Um, and you're talking about the major food groups and how much should be taken in in what has been calculated as a recommended daily allowance of certain nutrients. Mm -hmm. So you want to see, based on our varying, you know, we have very, very different types of um, diets in various cultures. Yeah, so you want to find out, are we getting this based on the food that we're eating mm -hmm. or uh, what I was eating before I had decided as I know to conceive, what are the things that I should change now mm -hmm. so that I have my cells, because you know we are looking at the body down to the cell level. So if you have a healthy cell, generally then you have healthy tissues, healthy organs, a healthy system and a healthy body overall. Mm -hmm. So you're looking 
you're looking at um, a, what you call it, nutrition for the cell, mm-hmm. then you will go down to those food groups and find out what am I supposed to be taking. Mm-hmm. Now, if you do not, um, what you call it, if, if you go down to what the, and I think you'll be, you'll be in a better position to tell us what are the various um, amounts uh, that you're supposed to take. Mm-hmm. We say if you if you um, if your diet becomes as varied as possible with the good nutrients, uh, for example, if a lady is obese and trying to get to be in the better uh, you know in, in a pregnancy, it would best be in your best weight. Mm-hmm. If you're in the best weight, so that can be nutrition. Mm-hmm. And nutrition cannot be ignored. If you we we say the cells heal themselves, mm-hmm. then they heal themselves through nutrition. So if you're able to feed well, then your cells will be healthy and your will be healthy. Yeah. So doctor, when I come in, I want to do preconception here. What should I expect in terms of screening, maybe mm. some supplementation? Yes, so in terms of screening, first is finding out where you are. So screening becomes starts from I am here mm-hmm. and I want to get there. And what we do is just draw a roadmap. So the roadmap includes lifestyle changes um, that range from you know, stopping smoking, we want to reduce the amount of alcohol you are taking, we want to reduce the amount of red meat that you are taking, we want to change from um, a white and white um, fly and white rice to more processed. We are talking about um, going from what we call um, saturated to unsaturated fats. Mm-hmm. Yes, which in saturated fats, of course, would be when you're taking your junk foods, etc. And then to now, unsaturated is your avocados and the rest. Um, so in, in terms of nutrition, then the roadmap includes those ones. It also includes exercise. What are we looking to um, to strengthen? You know, I've had my, the last pregnancies, you know, it's getting a multiple pregnancy. Right yeah. now, my, my muscle tone is low. What can I do to be able to hold the pregnancy better? And because we know the muscles are the ones that, um, the uterus is a muscle itself and then the abdominal wall is a muscle so how do we strengthen that so it's everything from diet and exercise and how um, how much or to do to get to where we need to be okay. how about the specific lab tests very good so lab tests now are specific to the individual so once you get to find out uh, as I said the now the now will also dictate I am overweight, I have a family history of diabetes and hypertension, I have a, you know, I have asthma, it is either all those different conditions. So once you find out the now, then you customize even blood tests to get to find out where that condition is. Mm-hmm. Now, the main ones we look at is your blood level. So we do what we call a complete blood count that tells us what is your blood level like. Mm-hmm. Are we um, um, anemic? Do we have iron deficiency anemia? Do we have an ongoing infection? Mm-hmm. We look at things like your blood sugar, and the blood sugar just tells us where you are um, in terms of whether we have diabetes or hypertension. Uh, we know that uh, babies, of course, are born through intimacy. Mm-hmm. And intimacy, there is risk of uh, sometimes contracting illnesses. Mm-hmm. So we also do an STD screen or a sexually transmitted disease screening, mm-hmm. uh, if it applies. We would go to the lengths of if someone is on chronic medication for some condition, diabetes, hypertension, just find out how that is, what the status of that diabetes, hypertension is. If you're overweight, we'd look at things like your cholesterol levels, um, if you had a history of heart disease, we do your echogram. So it's very um, customized to what the individual couple have mm-hmm. as they are now to be able to uh, understand how the now looks like and how we can alter it to get to the, the desired state. Oh, that's so profound. Mm. And maybe who needs a preconception kit? Is the ladies only or it's a... No, we, it's for us, especially when at La Femme, it has to be the couple. So we usually talk about the couple that we know um, conception is not done by an individual. So yeah, we talked true. about that there being intimacy and intimacy is a two-person game. Yeah. Now, we, um, the baby who is born of the couple is also a sum total of them too. So the baby gets to inherit not only the genes, uh, gets to inherit the characteristics, but can also suffer from what the parents, um, you know, in terms of that they're saying, 
if it's poor choices in terms of lifestyle, yeah. the baby can be able to suffer. And that's where now we want to be able to resolve some of those issues before we get to conceive. Oh, wow. Mm. Now, to me talk of the preconception case. Yes. yes. Me too, my couple, they've <laughs> tried. Yes. Now, I'm a they've conceived. When is the right time to do, to consider a pregnancy test? Because mm-hmm. Dr. Liliana Fadu, <laughs> Mesema, maybe it could be nose bleeding. <laughs> when is the best time to consider a pregnancy test? Now, we see when you have confirmed you've missed your period, mm-hmm. and you've missed your period by more than 10 days mm-hmm. from the day that you're expecting the period, that should be the time that you do the test. And once you confirm the test is positive, it's prudent to start the clinic as soon as possible. Now, as soon as possible could mean, uh, based on somebody's situation, that they are able to go in immediately. Mm-hmm. Or it could mean that they would go in as soon as symptoms begin. So it varies now for us. But the main thing would be once you confirm that you're pregnant, the first visit tends to be around 8 to 12 weeks for most people mm-hmm. if there's no complication. But if there's a complication, the, um, you'll find a couple coming before that eight weeks, especially we, we talk about once bitten twice shy. A couple who had suffered um, a long time of infertility would want to come in very fast after conceiving to be able to get, a, you know, to secure any, um, what do you call this, medication to sustain the pregnancy and ensure that they are on the right path. Mm-hmm. Similarly, a couple who has had miscarriages in the past would want to come in very fast. But then in the same breath, you'd have a lady who or a couple who, um, you know, they delivered, they, they conceived, they deliver even from home, etc. Mm-hmm. And that person would not be in a rush to come in. And they'll only come in when maybe there's a complication or they feel they may be kicking or something like that. But it's prudent to come in as early as possibly. Uh, you possibly can just to be able to examine and see that we are fit to carry the pregnancy now that we have conceived. Mm, also, yeah. people you've heard from the specialist himself, come up periods may miss <laughs> <laughs> 10 days and above. Mm. Yeah, there could be hope, but it's always good to have the pregnancy test just to confirm everything so that you can be able to start your antenatal clinic as early as possible. Mm. So now, Dr. I want us to you tell me why is it why is the the first trimester considered as the most critical period of fetal development right so if we if I'd use my model here so yeah. what we know is that in terms of conception mm-hmm. when intimacy happens here mm-hmm. sperms get deposited yeah. they then get to swim and go all the way up into the tubes mm-hmm. and while they're there they stay for about three days if while the sperm are here, if we happen to then be ovulating, then the mature egg gets released, is attracted to the tube, mm-hmm. meets with the sperm, fertilizes, the fertilized egg gets to be pushed down and into the uterus. And that is three days after the... Oh, yes. No, no, no within three days. So what happens is, in terms of timeliness, if when fertilization occurs, it takes six days for the fertilized egg to land here. Oh. Just a six-day journey to get into the uterus. Okay. Now, what happens in terms of a preconception then, we are talking about a situation where one, um, with the pregnancy, the issues that can go wrong tend to go wrong within the first trimester because it's the establishment phase of pregnancy. Mm-hmm. Establishment meaning that that's the time conception will happen. Did we have a good quality egg? Do we have a good quality sperm? And that's what preconception care comes in so that you can be able to be in the best state. But do we know whether... Uh, the pregnancy landed within the uterus or not mm-hmm. or did it remain within the tube because if we find out about it early enough we're able to do something about the ectopic pregnancy then you'd want to say that also within um, within the first trimester when the pregnancy comes and lands within the uterus by day six it's forming the placenta which is supposed to then uh, be an invasive structure into the uterus to draw nutrients mm-hmm. from there so the placenta can fail to implant well. It can fail to implant overall. Inside the sac, you, you know, everything could form except a baby. So you form the placenta, the sac, without the baby. That's what we call a blighted ovum. Mm-hmm. You could find what we call the um, a, a missed miscarriage where the pregnancy has failed to grow and the symptoms are still there, but you don't know, but the pregnancy stopped growing. You anticipate that maybe you're seven weeks, but the pregnancy did not grow past four weeks. So there are all those different things that can happen within the initial trimester 
which we call the establishment phase that is very very critical to how the pregnancy continues and at that point is where we know most of the miscarriages and miscarriage is any pregnancy loss before 28 weeks but most miscarriages happen within the first eight weeks um, because of that failure of the establishment of the pregnancy so it's important then to have um, to have a that follow-up to get to know that everything is going on well and we can be able to change a few things in the event that they are not so if there is the placenta that's not attached to well we can be able to help with that so um, that ties in the question of why the first trimester is critical and why antenatal follow-up is critical to be done as early as possible so, so that means in the first trimester there is importance of having an ultrasound to just yes if if you're able to again we talk about um where resources allow and we we are alive to the fact that not everyone has the facilities at least uh, the facilities available however if you're able to where the resources allow it will be prudent to see where the pregnancy is growing how the pregnancy is growing as early as possible because that informs us that in terms of what we were working on in the preconception mm -hmm. care is coming into fruition and we do not have any issues so that becomes the thing i always tell my patients we are referees in the pregnancy game so we do not have so much control over what goes on but you're able to give a red card a yellow card in terms of things that are going on mm -hmm. and say that if let's say the pregnancy is something off is going like bleeding you'll be able to stop it the red card you're able to if there's nausea vomiting you will not take away all of it but mm -hmm. you can give a yellow card in terms of reducing a percentage of the nausea vomiting so we um it's important if you can have a the care happening as soon as possible to be able to avert those issues and ultrasound is absolutely Safe. Yes. So, the, the, so ultrasound, and that's a very good question, yeah. uses sound waves similar to how a bat flies through the air. So yeah. we, we, we know it goes blowing and if there's um, no bounce back of that air, then it knows it's an open space and mm -hmm. can be able to fly. Now in the same case for ultrasound we use, it uses sound waves which are very See, that is it, it did not affect the pregnancy at all mm -hmm. so it's just that sound waves are pushed down and then they bounce back and they go through a structure there that brings out images in in a black and white scale and there's no risk we have patients who we follow up pregnancy developments as soon as every one week mm -hmm. and there are no issues and that can be over the period of the whole nine months and there are no issues at all wow that's great so ultrasound is absolutely Say Pakuna Kuogopa ultrasound C X ray no radiation involved. Absolutely. And so Dr. are there maybe specific nutrients to help maybe sustain this pregnancy? Did you come a folate iron? Okay. Yeah. So the most critical one that we know reduces the risk of miscarriages and pregnancy related malformations um is your folic acid. And Again, we talk about resources, um, but we know in a, in a public health initiative, mm -hmm. the Ungayo Ugali that we take has folic acid. Yeah. Blue band has folic acid. So you're already getting it from other sources mm -hmm. um, in, in at least some quantities. When we do get pregnant, when we go into the, to the hospital facilities, we'll be given your IFAS, which is iron and folic acid, mm -hmm. which are now important. And those ones help to... Um, at least reduce, as we said, those uh, pregnancy-related malformations and miscarriages. Now, what the more elaborate multivitamins have is that they contain your other multivitamins and micronutrients, mm -hmm. which are also known to be important in pregnancy. And especially if you're not getting enough through diet because of nausea and yeah. vomiting or food availability or food aversion because you're in pregnancy, mm -hmm. Um, somebody may want to just take fries and they cannot stand fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. so in that case in noting that the baby requires this nutrients um, then folic acid what because the folic acid is supplemented with other nutrients other multivitamins mm -hmm. in form of very many different brands of multivitamins to help support the pregnancy so what you are trying to tell us is prenatal vitamins they are bridging the gap between the, the food food. intake what you are what you are missing in the diet yes however mm -hmm. the diet would be more superior than those ones for the nutrients if we're able to then take nutrients um 
if you're able to get a healthy balanced diet mm-hmm. then the supplements may not be very very necessary mm-hmm. but if you're feeding well but if you have challenges in feeding and that is really very common in pregnancy because of your stomach is compressed this heartburn this bloating constipation indigestion then the supplements come in and that's why we have a lot of supplements in pregnancy like maybe 80 percent of women feel vizuri because i have an experience with Yani una hizi kunye ziko kwa bread yes, ziko kwa mko they are everywhere even you are smelling those yes, that's that's now it, it's it's true that they can be a thin line between commercialization of them versus the need for them um because there's there's usually instances like for us what happens is if you do not need them throughout and you're feeding well it is we actually stop them uh-huh. and you continue until such a time like let's say now in the third trimester i'm not able to feed my nutrition intake i'm not taking a very varied diet um then now we give so it's supposed to be very individualized having to take them that it's a must and must be taken throughout remember our mothers our great grandmothers did not take this exactly. but to um to their benefit their diet was what nowadays we would aspire to as diet here yeah. uh, what do you call this the more traditional diet yeah. or you know with, with wholesome foods etc yeah. as opposed to our uh, fast foods and the rest so for them they did not take those ones but their diet was very very um very varied with whole foods and natural foods and they also would be cancelled a lot even in their clinics when they went to the clinics was mostly around diet nowadays with the um with the supplements we still say try and aspire to take as natural foods or what call organic foods as possible yeah wow and now the parents comes to the first trimester and being critical what are some of the don'ts to sustain this pregnancy Wow. So the don'ts again goes back down to lifestyle, and there are some of the things which, in your first question around uh, managing the preconception or doing a preconception visit, would have been addressed. So we're talking about lifestyle where we are reducing your drug and alcohol um, abuse because we know those ones. You are a host, and the pregnancy is more or less the parasite. Yeah. So, with you carrying the pregnancy, all the things that you're consuming can go down to the baby. So, in terms of lifestyle, then um, the don'ts becomes you know your your drugs, your alcohol intake, your we're looking at radiation exposure. And we talked about those ones for ultrasounds and uh, you know ultrasounds being safe and X-rays not being safe. You're talking about your um from sleeping positions to the type of shoes that you are wearing because it could be bad for your back to um sleeping position that you want to get adequate rest during pregnancy so having a where the lifestyle is not allowing for adequate rest then becomes a don't you're talking about um hydration and where you could have been a uh, you know most people don't take water they take yeah. water indirectly through your have drank kombucha chai have drank juice have drank whatever but now in pregnancy we are very deliberate yeah so that we say pregnancy is a water retaining condition so most of the water is not within your your system can go down to the tissue so your body is dehydrated but you look migu in the forum to anona kama but the body itself is is uh, dehydrated so we talk about water intake so lack of fluid intake and the same fluid is what is expected to go in and form the amniotic fluid becomes an issue so um it's it's from lifestyle to nutrition to uh, just various sort of um like avoiding risky behavior becomes what we we see are generally general don'ts <laughs> put it that way this is going to be and i try to make some of talk something about sleeping position when mm. he left and is it necessary <laughs> not all the time so mm-hmm. it's actually overdone in the initial phase of pregnancy because what we say is we fear that um when you get to let's say 28 weeks and above the baby is above one kilo mm-hmm. so when you're lying facing up you could compress against the spine you could compress the main blood vessels and that's stops blood supply to the brain and or reduces blood supply to the brain and you get shortness of breath reduces blood supply to or you get dizziness to the to the lungs you get shortness of breath etc but before 28 weeks which is about what 7 months you can be in any position really. mm.
mimi ni lala na left concept of concept i tell you so it is overdone it's if you feel then the shortness of breath mm-hmm. you see the nuts at that point um then you don't persist sleeping on the back but if the, if there's none especially in the first trimester because the weight of the pregnancy is not that significant you can remain in position to sleep and and also it didn't comes natural it's in the bed to nalala to not very uncomfortable yes that is very true so doctor i want, I want you to talk to that woman outside there maybe as a couple they are planning to do the preconception care some of them they are pregnant but bado hawajaanza the clinic so mm. please talk to that woman talk to that couple okay so um so we say that in terms of professionals there are very many professionals out there in the reproductive health space we are talking about the nurses the clinical officers there's the general doctors your obstetrician gynecologists and all these professionals out there uh, ready to assist in regards to your pregnancy now clinic does not have an uncomplicated pregnancy does not need to be um that you're seen on a monthly basis you know um, if everything is okay we we'll talk about focused antenatal clinic whereby you're seen at least four times in in the duration of your pregnancy and these four times are um we have concentrated what needs to be done where we get to counsel you about your nutrition we counsel you about your risk factors in your particular pregnancy we counsel you about the you know the mode of delivery and what the risks and um, advantages are towards any we counsel you about the even the hospital we counsel you about what you need to to take to to hospital with you so there's a lot of resources um that are aimed at having a healthy pregnancy and a healthy mother and at the end of the day then you have a healthy baby um and it is prudent of course to take advantage of this um and do not ignore of course they there's also a lot of myths out there just around sure. pregnancy around yeah. delivery around um you know why we do you know um why we pregnant women do certain things <laughs> but now that's what that's what then we are equipped at and it's important to just get to, to take advantage of this of these facilities here well, that is it we've heard from the specialist himself the best doctor gynecologist dr zu here at la farm you've learned about the preconception care and also the first trimester and whole pregnancy journey so please make sure you subscribe like and see you on my next video bye bye